Hi, I'm John the Engineer Turmel, and tonight I'm going to participate in the saddleback debate between Barack Obama and John McCain, their first debate. There's a chance there's going to be a North American Union, and if ever there were, I'd be running for President or Prime Minister of that Union. So I may as well take this opportunity to explain what I could do for not only Canada, but the United States and the world as well. So I'm going to be throwing in my answers and one-liners to these uh, arguments made by the other candidates, and I hope you appreciate the errors they're making and the ways they could be fixed. Let's deal with abortion. 40 million abortions since Roe v. Wade. At what point does a baby get human rights, in your view? Well, you know, I, I think that whether you're looking at it from a theological perspective or uh, a scientific perspective, uh, answering that question with specificity, uh, you know, is, is uh, above my pay grade. Well, it's not above my pay grade. I'm an engineer. He's a lawyer. Uh, but, 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 but let, me, let, me, let me just speak more generally about the issue of abortion, because uh, this is something I, uh, obviously uh, the country wrestles with. Uh, one thing that I'm absolutely convinced of is that there is a moral and ethical element to this issue. Uh, and so I, I think anybody who tries to deny the moral difficulties and gravity of the abortion issue, I think, is, is not paying attention. Agreed. No one's trying to deny there's a moral basis. The question is what to do about it. So, 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 so that'd be point number one. But point number two, uh, I am, I am pro-choice. I believe in Roe versus Wade, and, and I, I come to that conclusion not because I'm pro-abortion, mm -hmm. but because ultimately I don't think women make these decisions casually. I think they. they they wrestle with these things in profound ways, in consultation with their pastors or their uh, spouses or their, their, their doctors and their family members. Um, and so for me, the goal right now should be, and this is where I think we can find common ground, and by the way, I've now inserted this into the Democratic Party platform, uh -huh. is how do we reduce the number of abortions? He's asking the right question. I've got the right answer. Because the fact is, is that although we've had a president who's opposed to abortion over the last eight years, abortions have not gone down. And, have, have and, and ever, that, I think, is something that we have, have to ask ourselves. So he knows what we have to ask ourselves about. That's the answer. Not really. He acknowledges the seriousness and the care given to the decisions of women who have to take have abortions. Now, I believe that abortions are rooted in poverty and are done for poverty reasons. Not many wealthy people who can afford to have children run out and get abortions, except for those who've been rendered a little callous by the permissiveness of it all, and without realizing the horror of terminating potential life. But the solution, again, is an interest-free credit card at the U.S. Treasury for every person and baby born. Here's a deal I make to Mama who wants to have an abortion. We will pick up the tab for bringing Junior to term. We will even pay you if we have to for you to bring Junior to term because he might be able to provide something valuable someday. There may be some gift, some technology, something he's going to produce in his lifetime, and we want to keep him around. So we're willing to use the state's interest-free credit card at the U.S. Treasury to finance Junior and let him come into the world. And if you don't want to take care of Junior, well, he can have all the best care and pay for it himself with his own credit card, because someday we hope that Junior's going to be able to be so rich, he'll be able to pay back what it costs us to pay you to bring them to life. So, how many people would be able to say, no, I really want to kill him. He's that much of an inconvenience to me, especially when with proper money, most people have birth control and there won't be too many accidents. So, it gets back to poverty every time. Senator Obama was stuck with the moral dilemma. He knew that there were good reasons why they couldn't afford these extra mouths to feed, and he'd never be able to come up with answers to them when he didn't have enough money. Yet he knew there's a moral dimension of killing unborn life that could turn into potentially valuable resources. The solution is interest-free credit at the high bank for anyone so that they can bring their children to term 
And even if we have to take care of Junior after that point, we do that. So that's John the Engineer's solution to how we end abortions, reduce abortions, by bribing the mamas to bring their babies to turn, term, and bribing the mamas to play with their babies and raise them for us if they want to. That's the answer. Poverty is the reason for abortion. Wealth is the way we can get rid of it. Voted to limit or reduce abortions. Well, the, the, I am in favor, for example, of limits on late-term abortions, if there is an exception for the mother's health. Now, from the perspective of those who uh, you know, are pro-life, uh, pro mm -hmm. I think they would consider that inadequate. And I respect their views. I mean, one of the things that I've always said is, is that on this particular issue, um, you know, if you believe that life begins at conception, mm -hmm. then, and you are consistent in that belief, mm -hmm. then I can't argue with you on that, mm -hmm. uh, because that is, that is a core issue of faith for you. Mm -hmm. What I can do is say, are there ways that we can work together to reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies. Well, of course there are. Make birth control affordable. Right now, broke kids don't have any way of affording good birth control, and that causes the majority of the problems. It isn't rich young ch kids getting pregnant, it's mainly poor young kids getting pregnant. So yeah, an interest-free credit card for all children, all teenagers, all adults too, means that everybody can afford good birth control. So that we actually are reducing uh, the, the sense that women uh, are seeking out abortions. Mm -hmm. And as an example of that, one of the things that I've talked about is how do we provide the resources that allow woman, women to make the choice to keep a child? Good question. Here's the answer. An interest-free credit line at the United States Treasury. Here's how the time banks worked in El Paso, Texas, the poorest city in the United States with the highest mortality rate. Fifteen years ago, some nuns picked up the Time Bank software. They set up accounts in the names of every brand new mama in the barrio with new babies and matched them up with old mamas who knew how to take care of babies. And the young mamas could pay the old mamas by writing them IOUs for the time spent, which either Junior or the young mama would repay in 20 years when the old mama needed help. And in that way, child mortality went down. So an interest-free credit line so that they can purchase the resources necessary to take care of their children, whether it be offered by a private group like these nuns through a t private time bank, or whether better be offered through the government at the United States Treasury. Either way, that's the way you provide the financial resources to that mother. You know, do we, have we given them the health care that they need? Have we given them the support services that they need? Have we given them uh, the options of adoption that are necessary? That, I think, can make uh, a genuine difference. Instead of giving them this, giving them that, how about giving them an interest-free credit line at the U.S. Treasury so they can afford to buy what they need? At the moment of conception. So the senator is pro-choice and he would force the mothers to keep the children no matter the hardships that it would cause. And a dinosaur from the old times, given how little time he even thought about his answer. At the moment of conception, between man and woman, between one man and one woman. That's my definition of marriage. And I believe marriage is a contract promising monogamy.